Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Savannah if you're new here and I do videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. I would love if you subscribe to the channel and do all the YouTube things if you enjoy the content. Today is one of my book videos and I know this one is gonna be a long one because this is a big old book. <laughs> um, and yes, so this is starting the Crescent City series by Sarah J Mass. This is the first book. Very beautiful. I love the cover and stuff. Looks like this. Um, this is the soft cover um, version. It's 799 pages, including the epilogue. Um, yeah, I believe that's what it is. Let's double check. Yeah, so a big old book. And yeah, this is what we'll talk about today. And I'll just read through my notes that I take as I'm reading and my reaction and things like that. I tried to keep like it brief in terms of what I talked about with the book, but there was so much information. You had to write stuff down, but I tried to keep it brief just because the book is so long. I knew this video would end up being so long if I noted too much. So I tried to keep it so the storyline makes sense but at the same time I didn't write every detail so we'll see I just finished reading it it's 8 30 at night so the lighting will probably switch and be weird but anyway so my thoughts before I started so if you watched my book haul video that I did I think it was back in February that's when I bought this series um the first two books the third book for this series is out um i think it's in october of this year so october 2023 um, i didn't pre-order it yet but i probably will get it pre-ordered soon um and i don't know how many books are supposed to be in this series some people say there's supposed to be four because there's four houses in this series so technically three of the four would be out but I don't know if that's a for sure thing or anything like that but anyways so I wasn't actually super excited to start this series I had read the back description and wasn't really like drawn to it when I first read it and just never went back you know to thinking about possibly purchasing it, even after reading Akatar and all of that stuff. Um, and so I wasn't super pumped to read this series, and the only reason why I purchased it was because I had heard rumors that there was going to be a crossover of Akatar and like this series. They were going to like kind of merge. And details you would kind of need to know before the next Akatar book would be in this Crescent City series stuff. And I was kind of annoyed because I was like, well, you know, I didn't even want to buy the series to begin with. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're saying there's going to be crossover. And so I wasn't super pleased, but I was like, I'll get it to read it because if there's going to be, you know, information, I want to have it. So that's why I bought it. Um, so I was just a little annoyed with that. Um, but anyways, so I got them to read and I, I was hoping, even though I was annoyed with that, I was hoping that I would still, um, enjoy the series though, because I'm not someone that can read books that they do not like. Like if I don't like it, I'm not going to be able to get through it and read it. So I was hoping that I would enjoy the books because I wouldn't be able to like hate read it or anything like that um and I wasn't quite sure um when I was thinking before I started reading how I would do the notes for this because it's so long but like I said I tried to keep things brief but it's still a lot of notes I'm gonna be done with my weight my makeup way before the end of this um so yeah, I wasn't totally sure what I was going to do going into this. But anyway, so also because the book is so long and you know how they decided to print it in terms of, you know, page, like the length, the size of the words and all that stuff, the book is really thick and I will say it was like uncomfortable 
to hold in your hands and read and I have um, this thing going on with my wrist right now that's really common in new moms. If you don't know, I have a baby, had her at the end of last year and it's like this tendonitis type deal in your thumb and my wrists are like really hurt all the time and they're it's super painful. <laughs> So holding this book to read was really painful. Like it didn't help that condition that I have going on at all. So I will throw that out there that the length of it did make it super uncomfortable to hold. Especially like in the middle it's kind of fine because it's equally balanced out. But when it's you're on the beginning or the end and it's like a whole bunch on one side and nothing on the other, it makes it a little bit worse. Um, So in the first chapter, there was so much information thrown out already. I actually reread the first chapter after I read the first three chapters and then I briefly kind of like skimmed and reread the first chapter to try to get my bearings because there's so much information revealed in the first chapter that you can't like keep it straight. It's names. It's all of these like beings, veneer. I, okay. Also, side note, I will probably say names and places wrong. If you say them one way, I'm probably saying them a different way. I'm saying it how I pronounce in my head based off of the spelling and stuff, but most likely that is not how it's supposed to be said, so I apologize in advance. Anyways, there's so many like veneer, which are all of these beings that are not human, <laughs> like angels and fae and all of these things, they all kind of qualify under this one umbrella term. And so there's so many details and so many like veneer revealed and they all like so many more beings that kind of live together in this world than they do like in Akatar. Akatar, I feel like there's my far fewer like beings all coexisting in their world. And so it was just so much. I was immediately kind of like overwhelmed. There's the multiple houses that I mentioned and people like belong to these different houses. And then there are the Asteri that rule like everybody. There's seven of them, but I think the seventh one was killed. So there's only six that are still remaining and they like rule everybody. And then there's like different tiers, levels of people depending on power and stuff like that, that are also kind of like, oh, they're ahead of this person, but then they're below, you know, the Asteri or whatever. And it's basically like no one is free except for the Asteri because, or Asteri, Asteri, I don't know how you say it, but um, just because like they are the all powerful and no one is free basically. Um, and the main rulers are in like Midgard, but then everybody else is in like Pangira or Luth. Luthania, Lithuania, what, what is the name of the city again? Oh Lord. Crescent City, whatever its ancient name used to be. So anyways, it's just a lot. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Uh, so which colors did I use last time in here? I don't know. So anyways, there's a lot going on and it was a lot to take in. So I definitely had to reread um, the first chapter just to kind of see. I just had to reread it. I couldn't continue without rereading it to try to get my bearings is what I'm trying to say. So Bryce is the main female character. She's half human, half fae. And she has a half-brother, Rune, I think that's how you say his name, that's full Fae. She's best friends with a wolf named Danica, she's a shifter, Danica is a shifter. And um, Danica is second in line to become Prime, which is like the head of like all of the wolves. And her mom is first in line, but people think that her mom should be skipped over for Danica because Danica is like better I don't know um and then again I mentioned the Asteri they rule the whole planet Midgard from the eternal city in Pangira there's seven heads of the city and then there are archangels and these different like areas 
Um, so yeah, so there's the seven Asteri, and they're the seven heads of the city, but then there are archangels that report to the Asteri, and the archangels are like the governors of their individual sects that they rule, these like little city, country type things. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on. And like I said, it's like all ranking of your powers and where you kind of fall. But the Asteri are the all powerful beings, people, whatever. Um, so Danica's second, his name is Connor. Um, and he seems to have a thing with Bryce, but they feign dislike for each other. Like they're kind of, you know, act like they don't really like each other, that they annoy each other, whatever. Um, but something seems to be going on there, I said. Um, let's see. Also, the main part of what's happening right now in like the first three chapters is that a human was trying to create a divide between the humans and the rest of the beings and was recently released on like a technicality. So the humans have been slaves of all of these people because they're below everyone, even the lowest ranking veneer. Um, they're below everybody. Um, and they've been slaves for 15,000 plus years. That's how long the Asteri have been in charge. But the Asteri and all these veneer and everything, they don't actually come from this world. There was a rift in like the northern part of the country or whatever. And all of these beings from all of these different worlds, 15,000 plus years ago, entered through this rift. And then that's kind of that. They've been there ever since. And the humans were technically there first, but because they're humans and they have no power, the, you know, the veneer instantly took over and they've been enslaved ever since. Like, they're really low ranking. They have no freedom really, which no one but the Asteri technically have any freedom. But anyways, so the humans have been rebelling on Pangira, um, the main part of the main country and the planet for a long time. They've been rebelling and trying to get back some freedom and remind people like who was there before all of these random beings appeared. Um, they just want to have freedom and not be slaves. Um, so then chapter five occurs and immediately, so basically immediately in the book, I was crying. It got an emotional hold on me real fast. So you know it's good, you know? Um, I had to hold back tears or was straight up crying multiple times throughout this book as a forewarning. Um, so Bryce finally agrees to go on this date with Connor who had been waiting for her for five years. Um, and she had kind of held back the whole time because she didn't want to be with a veneer male based off of her mom's experience with her biological dad. And so she held off and held off and she finally agreed. And then she was out having a good time, kind of like partying with some other friends. And when she came back, Danica and all of the others that had been there were killed. Um, hold on. So yeah, they were all killed. Connor, Danica, all of them. Um, and it was just devastating and heartbreaking. They didn't even have, um, like Bryce and Connor didn't even get a chance to see what was there. I think he might have been like her mate. Um, they were just super connected and it was just really heartbreaking that he was killed before they finally even got to go on like their first official date and try things out and see how they would do together and if they actually would get along and connect and everything as a couple. Um, so that was devastating. And again, that was chapter five that that happened and I was already crying. 
Um, so then Hunt, after this horrible situation occurs, Hunt is introduced. Hunt is an angel and he's like an assassin. He's known as the um, Umbra Mortis, things like that. Like he does the governor's dirty work and just kills whoever the governor says to kill. Uh, and he's enslaved as well, but we'll get into that more later. But anyways, so Hunt introduced. We love Hunt. Yes, we do. Um, so apparently the angels had rebelled a few centuries ago. Hunt, like I said, is an angel. And they had rebelled a few centuries ago to try and get rid of this unequal power structure that exists. Um, because they didn't want, so the angels were bred specifically for the Asteri to just have soldiers. Like they, that's why they even exist is just for the Asteri to be their foot soldiers, to do their bidding and just kill whoever and go to all the wars and all of that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, there's that hierarchy in place and no one is truly free except for the Asteri. So even though the angels rank so high in like the rankings that they, they have in the system that they have in place, they're super powerful and stuff. I think they're even more powerful technically than like the Fae and things like that. So even though they rank so high because of what's going on, they technically aren't free either. They're also still slaves. So anyways... So quite a few of the angels rebelled a few centuries ago um, to try to get this hierarchy out so people could actually be free. And then they were defeated though. And then all of them that had rebelled were punished. So Hunt was included in that because he was one of the main rebellers, which I don't even know if that's word, but um, when he talks about the woman that he fought for, cause he was like the head of her command, she was an archangel. It's like he loved her, but when he talks about her, there's also a lot of kind of like hints that she was kind of manipulating him a little bit and manipulating his feelings based off of things that had happened in his life to kind of brainwash him. And like, yes, the cause that they're fighting for is a good cause and like what they are believing in is good, but she kind of twisted things and manipulated him in a way that like, I don't think she was really that good of a person and kind of throughout the book as he says stuff about her it seems like he kind of also realizes that that wasn't totally a good situation or relationship even though he for hundreds of years had thought that it was he was only 33 when the rebellion happened like 28 to 33 and then he's been in prison for 200 years because he's like 233 years old anyways so they were all, all the angels were punished and they were like tattooed and branded. So all of these, some beings are immediately given them when they're born. Um, and then some of them earn it from doing things like this, the rebellion. So they have these like slave tattoos. And then the angels, because they're so powerful, they were also given a second tattoo that was like this crown tattoo like around their head and that actually dampened their abilities and their powers so yeah so hunt doesn't have access hunt Avalar is his name he doesn't actually have access to his full powers because of this thing so that way they can't rebel and try to do anything again so anyways um so they're permanently branded as slaves tattoo that causes them not to be able to access their power they can only access like a tenth of their power so they're really limited um and yeah so that was kind of some backstory for hunt that we're given to know why he's kind of the way that he is and why he does all these things because he's a slave and already we're 19 almost 20 minutes in and i'm like barely even in the book this is going to be a long video i hope you hold up with me Okay, so anyways, so that's a little bit about Hunt, which actually his name is not Hunt. What was his name? Someone said his birth name, which he had not been called since his mom had died when he was like 33, 28 to 33. 
was it Orion or something like that? So Hunt isn't even actually his real name, which Bryce does not know. But anyways, um, so the Fae that is Bryce's dad is actually the Autumn King. So the Fae still have like kings and queens in this realm, but they do have some power. But again, they're not really free and don't have that much power because no one is free under the Asteri. So... Asteri, Asteri, I really don't know how to say it. But her dad is actually the Autumn King, but he never claimed her as his own and he doesn't want anyone to know who she is. So he, no one actually knows in the city that she is his daughter except for Rune, which is her half brother. Um, uh, so then after Danica had been killed, Bryce had like chased down the demon. Um, Bryce had like chased down the demon and killed it or whatever. Um, but then the angels, which are part of the 33rd like auxiliary legion type thing. They're like the cops of the city. Um, and so are the shifters. They all have different like shifts. Um, but anyways, that's not really that important. So he, um, they had taken Bryce in when they found Danica and stuff like that and found, well, they found Bryce after she killed the demon, this demon thing. And then they took her in and then Rune came to get her and was like, she's Faye, you have no right to take her. She's under the Autumn King's protection. Everyone in the city that does know about Rune and Bryce, like I've seen them together, um, the story is that they're cousins. So that's what people think is that they're cousins. No one knows that they're siblings, again. Um, so Rune came to get out of the precinct um, because they were asking her what she had saw in the apartment and stuff. And she was in shock, so she couldn't even process or talk about anything and like answered none of their questions anyways because she physically could not. And then after that whole heartbreaking disaster, the book jumps to just about two years later. It's technically only been like, I think like 20 to 22 months. So it's like two months short of being two full years. Um, so anyways so Danica and Bryce had been living in this like nasty apartment because Bryce doesn't have a very well paying job and she couldn't afford to pay for um she couldn't afford to pay for a nicer place even though Danica could but Bryce wanted to be able to help pitch in and stuff but then after Danica died she left Bryce this like really nice apartment that's super safe and guarded and everything so that's where she lives now um so she left her money in her will so she can live in a way better and more secure apartment which is where they should have been living before um because maybe they wouldn't have all been killed i don't know um but before danica was killed danica and bryce were big like partiers drinkers using substances that kind of stuff but and since Danica's passing she hasn't touched anything and even after all this other stuff goes down in the book she only drinks some alcohol one time she continues to just not use substances um and I was still at this point I mean it's only a few chapters in but I was still just very upset that they like killed all of her friends off and she didn't even get a chance with Connor um and she didn't get to do the drop with Danica so the drop is this thing that the veneer can do um, at any age they wish to, but kind of like for sure before you're 30, otherwise you have a high likelihood of not being able to do it because you die. But the drop is you um, like doing this drop into yourself to access your full powers and then, you know, racing back up against the internal clock which is like six minutes is all you're allowed to get back to the surface and then you actually are you know like they're immortal kind of like they're not technically immortal but they're long living selves 
Um, and so they had always planned to do the drop together, but Danica had passed. So Bryce still hasn't done the drop and has no like plans of doing it anytime soon. Um, so I was just really upset that they had killed them off. I had a bad feeling when I started that something would happen to Danica, but I was hoping I was wrong, but I was not. And it was just very sad. Um, and then my one question that I had when I had started reading was answered because when they talked about Hunt and these slave tattoos and this other tattoo that inhibits his power and stuff, I was wondering if they could be removed, which they can be. So that was um, good to see that, you know, all these poor people can have their tattoos removed like it is a possibility um and hunt is trying to work to get his removed but his requirement is so he's the slave of micah which is the governor aka archangel of crescent city and he made a deal with hunt that said if you do all these killings and biddings for me and you eventually kill as many people i send you to kill as who you killed when you rebelled 200 years ago, then I'll set you free. So he's working to get his removed, but his bidding that he has to do to get that is really tough and he has to keep killing, which is really just slowly killing himself as well and like killing his soul and really breaking himself, like he's breaking down himself because that's really hard to just keep you know, killing and doing all of these things and acting like it's fine and not bothering you. So now, you know, two years after Danica had been killed, someone else is killed the exact same way her friend was just under two years ago. Um, and they get Bryce back into questioning to ask if she knows anything about it and like how it could have happened you know, because they hadn't seen anything like this for two years. So now the governor is enlisting Bryce to work with Hunt to try and figure out um, who is doing these killings because there's this thing called the summit coming up and that's where like all of the, like the governor will have all of the like lower members in himself but people that he kind of has in charge of parts of his city they all come together um with some other governors from other cities in midgard or whatever to discuss kind of what's going on and what they need to do and blah 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 it's called the summit and the asteri like approve these meetings and kind of monitor them and they kind of make them have these meetings. So anyway, so he wants this solved. The summit is about to happen in like two months or something like that. And he wants to have these murders solved before then. So that way he doesn't look kind of like an incompetent leader of where he's at. So anyways, like I said, I would be done long before. I mean, I have so many notes still. So anyway, so they're enlisting Bryce to work with Hunt to try to find this killer. So Hunt is now her like bodyguard while she's doing this. Um, and he also has been told that if they find the killer before the summit, all of the art, um, then he will only have 10 assignments left off of his debt um, that Micah was making him work towards. And he had, he had over 2,000. So to only have 10 left is huge. So he's like, um, he's definitely like, I for sure need to figure this out. <laughs> Um, so they're kind of thinking that it was someone who knew Danica that killed her, you know, always look closest to you first, you know what I mean? Um, her mom is an obvious suspect. Her mom did not really seem to care for Danica, which she didn't, um, you know, she always said horrible things about Danica and about Bryce. So her mom is an obvious suspect. Um, 
but her mom is also an alpha and powerful and in charge of a lot of safety stuff in this city. Um, oh, I mean Danica. But Danica was also an alpha and powerful and she was ahead of the auxiliary. Auxiliary? Yeah. Um, and so there would have been a lot of people that were enemies or people that didn't like her because of her job and stuff like that. So it will be a pretty big list of who could possibly be targets. Um, but at this point I noted I was really enjoying the book so far and was quite emotionally invested really quickly, which I was glad about um, because I was enjoying the book and actually wanted to read the 800 pages. <laughs> so you have, um, I kept kind of noting throughout the rankings because it helped me to keep things straight. So you have like the auxiliary, which is kind of like the police, um, and you have like angels and that and all the shifters and stuff like that and then you have the city heads um which are like the fey king and the viper queen and like all these people in charge of small sects in the city and then you have the governor or the archangel which is in charge of the whole city and is above the city heads um and then you have the asteri so that's kind of the power ranking um so the story keeps mentioning a rift in the north that let all of these different creatures into this world that was originally only inhabited by humans and animals. So they were, it was like our earth right now. This is who is here. And then this rift opened and all of these veneer came in and then enslaved the humans. Um, and I said, I wonder if the Fae somehow left where the Fae and like the Akatar series are and entered this world. Um, because they seem to have similar abilities to the Fae in that series. Like, um, the Autumn King kind of has, like, the fire. And he has, like, the auburn hair, like, Lucian and stuff like that. And then, um, Shadow, like, Rune has, like, shadows, like, um, Ezreal and stuff like that. And then there's the Starlight. Um, also, Rune's dad wants him to marry to continue the bloodline. Um, their bloodline. Normal. But an oracle had told Rune that the bloodline would end with him, which is very interesting. Because um, he doesn't quite know what it means. Like, is he going to die or like what's going to happen? Um, I also hope we get more info on why Rune and Bryce had a falling out because they had been close once. So I didn't really take notes of this later on. But basically, they just had a falling out because Rune... I mean, it was just kind of like a typical sibling spat that went too far and names and things were thrown out and Rune wouldn't listen to Bryce when she tried to warn him about how power hungry his dad is and to like keep an eye on himself because he wasn't safe even though he's his dad's son and heir to the throne um, and that made Rune mad. So that's basically all of us. Um, and then Rune and Hunt despise each other, which is so great. It's just very funny. Um, also, a week before the first murders, this ancient relic, this horn, went missing, and it belongs to the Fae. It's like one of their artifacts, and recently Rune's dad started looking for it again, and then someone was murdered again shortly after, so I was like, coincidence? No. So the horn is connected to, like, all of this stuff. Um, so Bryce and Hunt, in looking for the killer, also end up looking for the horn because the horn is connected to all of this stuff. Um, I was, I'm really enjoying the banter between Bryce and Hunt and their dislike for each other. Great tension building. I also like how she pushes his buttons and speaks to him in a way no one else would dare. And he kind of lets it slide even though it infuriates him. Because he is so powerful even with only a tenth of his power. And he's the Umbra Mortis. A lot of people, like everybody else just steer clear and like, steers clear of him. And like goes away, doesn't even come near him. And Bryce is just like, don't care. <laughs> And I loved that. Um, I also find it funny no one has guessed that Bryce is Rune's sister and not his cousin. Um, because they have so many similarities. And even Rune constantly says that Bryce and their father have very similar facial expressions and are able to like go completely neutral and give this like really cold and mean like look and totally shut down. So it's just interesting that no one's picked up on it yet. Um, so two years ago, before Danica had been killed, Bryce had actually been looking for this horn that originally belonged to the Fae because they used it in the first war. 
and her boss is like this arts collector um, and then she sells these things for super high prices and the horn had went missing right before Jessica's death and so Bryce had actually been looking for it then and had found no traces of it it was like a dead end and now she's looking for it again so they're theorizing that that demon that Bryce had killed had killed Danica and then uh, that demon had been tracking the horn because it can defeat them like the horn can open portals into other worlds but then it can also it, the horn was what they used to get the demons out of their world when the northern rift had opened and the demons had also come in so they use it to like get them out and then shut them out so the horn can kind of do a lot of stuff um and so because it banished them once to hell they think the demon is looking for the horn to use that to like reopen the portals and stuff so anyone who had contact with the horn was then attacked by the demons searching for the horn they think like every time someone dies it always seems like there's a connection to the horn um and then rune has starborn powers that are the original like powers from the original fae that had come over um and that's what had you um like the person with the starborn powers is who could use the horn that was like their thing and so they're hoping to use his powers to draw like find the horn draw the horn to himself um and hoping that if they find the horn then they can find the demon that killed danica and all the rest of them um so yeah so then obviously that means danica had some type of contact with the horn before she died so then some thoughts so hunt to me is like a mixture of cassian and Azrael. so from akatar so he's like tortured and more close off like Azrael, like has a lot of demons and a really tough past and stuff like that but at the same time his looks are described more like cassian's like with the longer hair and that kind of stuff and he also I don't know, his like sarcastic personality also kind of reminds me of um Cassian as well so that was funny that he's like kind of this mix of those two characters um so then so far also at this point in the book which I didn't even write anything um they're still just searching for who could possibly have the horn and then who the person is that is killing people to try and retrieve it so they're thinking they're looking for two different people at this point um, they also continue to have their banter and they're learning more about each other, growing fond of each other. I really like them as a couple and I was like, oh, I love it. Um, so then the Oracle, they went to the Oracle to try to see if they could figure out any information about this horn. And they revealed that the person that has the horn wants to reopen the Northern Rift. And she also warned Hunt to stay away from Bryce, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and she offered to tell Bryce about the future that she's, she offered to tell Hunt about the Bri about the future she had si seen for Bryce, good lord. But he declined, and I kind of wish he would have asked because I would love to know. Um, she also asked if he wanted to hear about his own future, and he declined as well. And that also made me mad because I wanted to hear. So, that was frustrating. Um, and then finally reached chapter 36 and I said their chemistry in chapter 36 whew, it was hot it was good um Hunt has basically not been attracted to anyone since his lady 200 years ago that he was infatuated with um but he's attracted to Bryce and it's great and their chemistry is just I love it I love it it's so good so good so as the book continues evidence is starting to point to Sabine which is Danica's mom about possibly being the one that is searching for the horn which would mean she's summoning the demons that's continuing to kill people while she's searching for this horn um but if that's true then she killed her own daughter which she was always extremely jealous of danica and hated her pretty much um but it still seemed a little confusing because it didn't really seem like sabine would fully do that um but Sabine may know who stole the horn and is going after them or she may be messed with evidence so she could be the one to find the horn because it came out that Sabine messed with the evidence um, 
the night the horn was stolen so maybe she like knew who did it or was trying to cover it up so she could be the one to find it it's not really known at this point um but it's really interesting and there's so many details it's impossible to have enough notes and time to discuss and like to keep all the information straight um, but they're speculating that sabine might have the horn but then why would she be calling up the demon whose sole purpose is to search for the horn and I said maybe she stole it and lost it. I was a bit confused at this point. Like it got a little, got a little muddy for me. But then in chapter 45, I said I knew something bad was going to happen. I could just sense it. The chapter ends with Hunt being attacked by the demon. And I said what a coincidence. They had just met, met with Sabine and now this happens. Um, well, they ended up surviving the attack and they killed it pretty easily. And this is two times now that Bryce has survived an attack. And um, Bryce is thinking that something just isn't adding up with this situation. And I agree because how could she survive the attack twice? But Danica and four or five of her pack members were all killed. Like it doesn't make sense. Um, I said we will see what happens but something fishy is definitely going on. An entire pack of wolves should have easily been able to defeat that thing if Bryce and Hunt could do it together alone. Um, oh crap. So Sabine just said that she messed with the footage because Danica stole the horn. So I guess she did it just to see, um, they're thinking at this point, they're thinking that Danica stole the horn just to see if she could. And then Sabine covered her tracks so she could leave. So Danica could leave somewhat of a legacy after she died and not be a complete humiliation to her mother. Um, and Sabine also seems to not know anything about the demon either, so it's back to square one. Um, so Bryce is thinking Danica stole the horn to keep the killer from getting it. And maybe she heard some rumors about someone wanting to use the horn for evil purposes and that's why she stole it. Um, and then the killer killed her but didn't find the horn. And thus the killer is still using the demon to kill people to try and find the horn. So if this is true, where did Danica hide the horn? I mean, so many questions, so many twists and turns throughout this whole story. Um, Hunt is really starting to like Bryce and is starting to finally have feelings for someone else besides his first love. And as these feelings are emerging, he's kind of thinking about his past and kind of seeing how, I don't know how you say her name, but Shahar, his first love, was definitely kind of not a pure... I feel like not even a reciprocated love because when he explains things, she definitely twisted stuff and manipulated him. So, you know, who knows? Um, so then it comes out that the demon that they thought was doing all of the killings is not actually the one that killed Danica and a couple of the other victims that have now been popping up. Um, the Crystalos is the demon's name is killing people but it's not the same as whatever killed Danica and her pack so again they're having to start from square one so it's like it's not this demon it's not Sabine like what is going on um so then Bryce has a connection with the fifth demon prince of hell so that's another aspect there's seven demon princes of hell they all have different rankings and like the fifth sixth and seventh are the most powerful and so she seems to have a connection with the fifth prince, which is very interesting. He seems to care for her and know something about her future. And he wants her to make the drop. And I said, I'm thinking she may have her magic and abilities appear if she makes the drop. Because Bryce is fae and she has like the super long lifespan and like the height and the fae ears. But other than that, she's human. She has no powers, no abilities, none of that kind of stuff. Um... And then I made a note here. So I said, I read Akatar a while ago, but I've recently seen some theories already connecting the series to this first book even, um, which I said, I can definitely see how like Rune and Azrael might have some type of connection. Um, I also recently saw that the horn is something that was described as one of the lost artifacts in A Court of Silver Flames, I think. Um... I said it's really interesting but it's also hard to keep it all straight especially because I read Akatar like over a year ago at this point and 
you know, so it's been a minute and I don't remember all the details. So I said, I just wonder how they can travel to the different worlds and everything because obviously the Faye and Bryce's world probably came from where Reese and them are at. So it's just a lot, it makes me feel like I need to read Akatar again, but <laughs> I'm reading other things and like I don't have time to continue to film these videos and read Akatar again and read new books. It's just too much. So we'll just have to go off of people's videos to remember details. Um, so there's this synthetic magic drug that's kind of going around that's called synth and apparently it might be able to repair the horn so this artifact of the fae is broken um and they think that this could repair the horn so apparently danic had found it leaked two years ago um the drug this is what um, Bryce is thinking that Danica found that the drug had kind of leaked onto the streets about two years ago and she went to bust the operation and then found out about someone using it on the horn so then she stole the horn. So someone who leaked the drugs is also probably the person that wants the horn because the drugs can heal the horn. Um, all very interesting but Bryce is hurt because Danica never mentioned any of this stuff to her they were best friends so she's like really hurt and upset and you know not happy um so then Bryce and Hunt say that they're like mirrors to each other which I love and it's definitely true um you know like their heartaches and their struggles and stuff mirror each other you know how Bryce feels on the inside, Hunt often portrays on the outside, that type of stuff. Love it. I would love that quote on some type of like jewelry, mirrors to each other, something. You know, it, I would, that would be great. Um, I think that they're mates. I really do. They have like the mate type connection to each other, you know, the strong emotional connection. I don't know. I said I love it. I love the slow burn that they have, how they're connecting and realizing that they have similar heartache and pain. Um, I also love how Hunt defends her against, there's really no other word for it, against the bullies that don't like her. Um, it's just very satisfying to read and see it play out. Um, so then we find out it isn't a second demon that had killed Danica because they thought, okay, this first demon we were looking at must have done it, but then they realized it didn't, so they figured a second demon had also occurred. But it turns out that is not the case. Um, but they think someone injected with the synth drug because um, Danica had found out about the illegal uses of the synth drug and left clues for Bryce to find out the truth because they knew she would come for her. they would come for her because she found all this information. So now they need to figure out who is using people or whoever to do their dirty work to kill people. Um, and then pretty much every other note at this point on is going to go, oh my gosh, at the beginning because it was intense these last few chapters. So chapter 66 is insane. Hunt found out about Synth before him and some of the angels. Um, Hunt found out about Synth before Bryce had fully figured out that information with Danica. And him and some of the angels were planning on using it to rebel again and defeat their enemies to finally be free. And then he also knew that Danica, well, this is what Hunt has been told through the information he found. He thought that Danica was addicted to synth and that she wasn't actually stopping it but causing it to get on the streets two years ago. And then he also claims that she took too much that night two years ago and killed her entire pack and herself. Um, Hunt is also claiming he went um, to the drop that they were just at to get the drugs to then fuel their new angel army and try to rebel again. He is claiming to Bryce because she busted him that he was actually going to the drop to stop it and he told his friends he was out but they wouldn't listen. So they were just arrested, Hunt and his two friends that went to this drop um, by Micah and Bryce told Hunt she never wants to see him again. I was like, dude, what is going on? This still doesn't explain why someone would steal the horn and wants to use it really but I was in complete shock and heartbroken. I was like, poor Bryce, she can't catch a break, dude. 
but I get why Hunt did it because it's messed up how the power structures are and the eternal slave type situation. And Hunt did realize too late that he had something to live for with Bryce and a reason to keep his deal with Micah to try to become free, but he realized it too late and he tried to stop it, but wasn't successful. Then I said, I feel like this witch friend of Rune's might take the tattoo off of Hunt's head that binds his powers and weakens him. So Rune has this med witch friend. She actually turns out to be the queen of one of the cities, um, but they didn't know that that's who she was. But anyways, I had a feeling that she was going to be the one to take the tattoo off of Hunt's head. So I was like, we'll see. And then, oh my gosh, Hunt is now Sandriel's slave again. So Sandriel was Shahar's sister, evil sister, I should say. And she had owned Hunt before, but then had lost him because of her debts. But then Micah, as Hunt's torture for what he just did, gave him back up to Sandriel. So now he's her slave again. Um, and I was like, he could have had a life with Bryce, but he was just too dumb to kind of notice his feelings and Bryce's feelings quick enough. And Bryce doesn't even know the truth, that he actually meant everything he said with her and he wasn't lying. Like, he actually did care for her, wanted to be her friend, like, all these things. But I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Apparently, Micah, the governor and the archangel of Crescent City, was the one looking for the horn. So all that stuff about Danica, he had lied to hunt about. So Micah leaked the drugs into the city and he injected Danica with synth um, after he had went to try to get the horn from her and she didn't have it. Um, so that way Danica killed the pack and herself. And Danica had actually ground down the horn into a powder and mixed it with ink when she had gotten a tattoo on Bryce's back. She had brought Bryce to get this tattoo and had tattooed the horn into her skin. <sighs> I know it was just shocking so the governor wants to use synth injected into Bryce to repair the horn and then use that to open a portal to end the war between the veneer and the humans and he also wants the Asteri Island to accept him as one of them because he's power hungry like he wants to be an Asteri he wants to gain this power through the horn and like being able to open these portals and defeat all the humans and blah, 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 blah. Just craziness. And I was like, oh, dude, okay. Bryce is such a badass. Like throughout the whole book. I mean, oh, she's amazing. Her stepdad, I will put this in as a side note. His name is Randall. He was forced to serve in the wars because all of them are. He's a human, by the way. And he was like a legend super good with like guns fighting all that kind of stuff a legendary sniper all of it and he trained bryce from like her being tiny to be able to fight and defend herself and she is just amazing <gasps> i love her i think i love her more than any of the females in the akatar series like she's fantastic i love her so much anyways so she's a badass there's no other word for it she kills micah <sighs> micah went after her to try to use the horn in her skin, right? And then she ends up killing this man because he was like trying to kill her while he used the horn. Just insane. So much happened between chapters like 78 and 80. It was heart wrenching. It was amazing. I was in shock. Bryce is just amazing. There's no other word for it. Um, but before Micah died, he did successfully open a portal, but the portal opened to hell. And seven of them opened actually, and all these in the city they have these seven gates and they all technically connect to each other and you can talk to each other through the gates that was like the ancient way of communicating and all of the gates opened in these portals so there's seven of them open and demons are just piling into the city they're coming in um but all of the powerful veneer are at the summit because the summit's going on and the pathetic asteri want them to just sit and wait while these de demons basically kill everyone in this city because they don't want anybody to go there and stop it. They're just like, oh, whatever. Like, we'll just wait it out. Typical, typical. But Bryce, oh, she was <laughs> fighting her way through. It's amazing. So cool. But turns out Bryce is actually the starborn fae 
air. So Rune also has the Starborn powers, but not to the extent of Bryce. Bryce is like, she's got a full on star in her. She's bright. She doesn't have other powers, but she has the light that's technically from another world. Like this Fey light is from the world that they originally came from. And then I was like, holy crap. Hypaxia, okay, so first of all, I also have to note, there's cameras throughout this whole city because the Asteri and the governors monitor everything. So you don't get away with anything. There's cameras and like microphones everywhere. So everything is monitored. And while everyone was at the summit, they were watching Bryce, like they watched her kill Micah. They watched her taking on all these demons on her own. And while they're watching, I mean, they're all just in shock and horror for her life. So Hypaxia, that witch, takes the halo off of Hunt's head so he can save Bryce. I know. Sandriel told the Asteri of Bryce's ability with the star and everything, and so that they would rather kill her to protect themselves than let her shut the gates that are all open at the moment. She's going to use her light plus the horn tattooed into her to shut the, shut the gates. And Hunt was like, no, no. So first he kills Sandriel because... He's gotta, and it was fantastic, and yes, love. Hunt also has these lightning powers that no other angel has, um, and I think he's gotta be some type of archangel or something because, I mean, no one else has these powers. He's way more powerful than every other angel, so something, something's gotta be going on here. And I'm gonna pause this one more time, and we will wrap this up. Okay, so I'm in shock as I read these last 60 pages. That's all I have left at this point. Bryce made the drop while using the gates that are all connected in the city to close all the portals because she knew if she used that to make the drop and then her power would flood through because that's what happens when you do the drop, that it would close all the portals. So she did that. And while she's using the gates that are all connected to the city, um, one of them actually connects to like the bone quarter, like the underworld basically where all the dead souls, like where you go when you die. And Danica actually connected with her through the freaking portal. I know, it's amazing. She connected with her and helped her to make the drop and like helped her make it and everything. But also, because Bryce was using those portals, when you would use those portals, you would have to give a little bit of your magic to use them and or a little bit of your abilities or whatever it is magic I think and because of that when she was making the drop she went a lot further in power because you like go down to your power level then you shoot back up she went way further down in power because she had access to all of these people's power that had used the gates for however long they've been established so she went way down in power um, she actually gathered more power than her fae father, the Autumn King, through the drop because of all the power in the gates. Um, and it was just amazing. And they didn't think that she'd be able to make it back up because she went way further than she should have been able. But she did. She survived it. And she is super powerful. <laughs> and Hunt is with her and he's like free of the power restraints. I was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, they could take on the Asteri with, you know, the power that they have combined together. And I have 20 pages left. So then, the Asteri let Hunt go and mark his slave tattoo now says a C to show that he's freed as a thanks for what Bryce did. But, yes, he's not a slave, but they did this to try and continue to control them. So they are a power couple together and could easily end this slavery that's been going on for like 15,000 plus years because they both are so powerful. And the Asteri, as they were talking to them, hinted, they were like, yeah, if you keep in line, you know, just live your nice quiet life because they don't want to be disrupted and they don't want a rebellion and they don't want to lose their power over everyone else. So yes, he's free, but they're really not technically free because no one is free. Anyways, so then the epilogue. So much still going on in the epilogue and it's literally like a page and a half. The fifth prince of hell meets up with Jezeba, which is Bryce's, bot, I would think old boss. I highly doubt she still works for her, but Bryce's boss. And they kind of like are meeting up and the fifth prince of hell, which is also the prince that Bryce has a connection with, 
says that so much more is about to go down and he knows Bryce has the star power of this ancient fae that was struck down in the last battlefield and her power was supposedly lost forever but Bryce has it. I don't know. And he said Hunt's father would be proud of him. And Jezebel, Bryce's boss, apparently knew Hunt's dad. I don't know. And even Hunt didn't know his dad or who he is or anything like that. I was like, what is going on? So who knows with the next book? So more stuff's about to go down in the next book. I have no idea what. The fifth Prince of Hell will definitely be involved because there's something going on there and I can't figure out what it is. Like, I can't figure out what the deal is but he has this connection with Bryce and he cares for her you can tell so I don't know and Jezebel I knew there was something weird going on there she's like a sorceress she was a witch but she left her like coven thing with them and is no longer a part of that like world but I don't know I don't know what's happening but Jezebel does own like this secret library that was supposed to be lost and it has all of these books and research and things that the Asteri, you can see where I scratched myself, that the Asteri don't want anyone to have access to because it will, it has all this information from before they were there that the humans had about, you know, their life before and, you know, all these things. So even Lower Veneer would be very interested to know all this information. So anyways, that's the gist of 800 pages and as short as I could keep it. Um, I really enjoyed the book and the connections to Akatar so far and the storyline. Um, lots of twists and turns. It's a slow burn that was never fully satisfied. They would just be about to like go away from the slow burn and actually, you know, dive in and then it would like something would happen and they'd have to stop. So hopefully that gets fulfilled in this second book at least. Let's hope. Um, I'm just so glad I enjoyed the book. I was hoping I would because I can't um, read things I don't like. I can't wait to read the second book um, and see what happens now since the horn issue is solved technically, but they were threatened by the steer eye to like stay quiet and stay in your little lane and all will be well. I, I cried multiple times during this book or at least teared up even if I didn't fall on cry. Um, yeah, quite a few times I did. It was, it really pulled me in, you know. I really enjoyed it. I wish I would have read it after I read Akatar because the first book was for sure out when I got done reading Akatar because I read that later. I don't know if the second one was or if it had just released when I read that. Um, I wish I would have read it right after because I see videos of people like linking the similarities and I'm like, oh man, I don't remember that from Akatar or whatever. Because I read it so long ago and I don't really have time to read it again so I don't know but I really enjoyed it I would love to know what you think so far no spoilers on the second book yet I am going to start reading it now although this video is not going to be up for quite some time I think like August I'm pre-filmed out to and it's the beginning of June so I'm pre-filmed out a bit so I'll have read that book by then for sure but no spoilers on this anyways for anyone that hasn't read it but yeah, I loved it. I also love the, I don't know, I just think it's so pretty, the cover. I'm excited to read the second one. I'll zoom in and show you the look and then we're done. It was very just simple, quick and easy. I used a few different single shadows from um, Lethal Cosmetics and Terra Moon Cosmetics. I'll link or I'll list the names down below like I always do. It's like this periwinkle blue type situation but a little bit more blue, less purple. And then a couple different duochromes, multi-chromes on the lid from Terra Moon that are just pretty and sparkly. And they have like blue, they both have blue bases, but then they have like, this one has like green gold shifts and this one has more pinky purple shifts. So simple, pretty easy. I mean, like I said, it was 8.30 when I started. It's now 9.30. I'm going to go take this off. So <laughs> anyways, yes, I hope you guys liked the video. I know this one is long. I hope you stuck it out. The books are too long to make them very short. I mean, it's 800 pages and the second one also is. I would love to know your thoughts and I will see you in two weeks with the second video, with the second book, which I'm hoping is just as good, but I know it will be. I loved it and that's all. <laughs>